Hey everyone, it's Ryan, and I gotta tell you, I'm excited I haven't done a tutorial in a while, and I had a little bit of inspiration finally, playing a video game on Xbox called Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. They had a really awesome logo, and it took me back to the 1980s movies, and I went back and I watched Total Recall, and I was like, you know what? I love the sort of retro sci-fi slash video game uh, logo slash look. So we're going to try and make that today. It's going to require Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And you're taking a look now at what the finished product of this is going to look like. With that being said, if you're excited like I am, let's jump into Illustrator and get started. Inside Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to make a new document. And 10 inches by 10 inches is fine. I'm going to call this grid. Now as you make these documents, you can save them as you want. I'm going to go and select where the line segment tool is underneath the pen tool. Click and hold and select the rectangular grid tool. Now I can click on the canvas and specify how many dividers uh, vertically and horizontally I want. And this, I'm going to go for an even number or an odd number. So I have one right down the middle of 25. And that's perfect. So 25 by 25, nice big grid. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Command C and copy that. Now in Photoshop, we need to make a new document. And I'm going to make this the size of a Retina Mac screen. So 2880 by 19 or 1800 rather. And that would become 1440 by 900 scaled down. And I'm going to call this 80s sci-fi. Now in this document, I'm going to go ahead and paste in our grid. I want to paste it as a smart object. So you can see it starts really small. Pasting it as a smart object is going to let me scale it up to be a pretty obnoxious size without losing any quality. That's what I want. You just want to make it nice and big until maybe you see about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 20 squares across the whole canvas. And when it's like that, you're going to come and turn it off from being a smart object. So right click and rasterize this layer. Why am I rasterizing it? Well, we're going to transform it next. And the only way we can skew transform this thing the way I want it to is to do it with a rasterize object. Next, I'm going to hit Command T for transform. You can see all the way around when I'm zoomed out this transform mechanism. I'm going to pull the grid down to about halfway through the screen. Then I'm going to hold down Command. And you can see what that does. It just pulls a corner. I'm going to hold Command Shift. And you can see that keeps it straight. I'm going to hold Command Option and Shift. And you can see that pulls out our two bottom squares at the same time. Now I'm pulling these out to about twice the size. Uh, it originally was. And that means things are going to get a little blurry. So I let go of everything, and now that this is at a kind of a cool angle, I'm going to just take one side and hold down Option and Shift and kind of collapse this down until the corners meet the sides of the document. And I'll zoom in and see. Yeah, they're a little bit past the sides, and that's exactly where I want them. I'll hit Enter. This is a little bit more of an art than it is a science for me. I know some of you would probably like exact measurements. I'm sorry, I don't have them. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and turn it into a smart object again so I don't lose anything. Now I like to quickly in Photoshop CS6 turn on the crop tool. And when I turn on that crop tool and I go and pull one of these, I can see the center of my document. It's about here. So I'm going to say don't crop and just bring this up so it's about centered right across there. Now we're ready to start styling this uh, particular piece. And the way we're going to do that, okay, is we're going to fill the background with a color. Now the color's not going to quite be black. It's going to be almost black. And by that I'm going to pick a purpley blue. I'm going to make it way unsaturated and almost 
black, you can see I've got 17161E is the exact color I'm using. I'm going to hit Command and Delete and fill that back. It's not even dark enough, so I'm just going to very quickly go to Image Adjustments Brightness and just pull down the brightness till it's almost black. And now I'll read this color to you. 101015. So very close to black. In fact, on some monitors, it'll just look black. But I assure you, it's not black. <laughs> so next, we're going to style our grid to be kind of digital or glowing or standing out. Where we're going to do that is with effects. So right click. And then let's go to blending options. We're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to give it a color. Red is not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more of that digital blue sort of. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm going to go ahead and give it an outer glow. And try and use the outer glow and suck up the exact color. The exact color of one of these lines here. If you can't get it, I'm just going to bring it real close and eyeball it. And the reason why I'm making this the same color, when I crank up the size, you'll see it gives us a little bit of a glowy, sort of transparent look to the whole thing. So now this grid is sort of lit up feeling. Take that whole grid and just bring it down to, say, 80% of opacity so it's a little bit see-through. And I think we're perfect there. Um, the only other thing I might do is create a mask, right, like this on our vector smart object grid. I'm going to grab a gradient, select our linear left to right, and we'll do a black and white, and we'll go top to bottom. And I mean for that to go the other way, so I'll go bottom to top. That's pretty good. And now that that's a little bit darker, I'm going to bring it back up to, say, 90% opacity. So as you can see, I'm just kind of playing with things as I go and seeing how the effect looks. I may end up pulling this grid out a little bit later, so I'm going to unlink it from its mask. Now what I'm going to do is start in by making us a sort of glow in the background. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to swap my colors and let's choose a bright pinkish, orangey, purplish, yes, a color like that. I have EA2751. Now I'm going to go over to the gradients and I'm going to choose the mirrored gradient, which is the fourth one in the list. And for the gradient style, I'm going to choose the second one that just paints the color on the canvas. Select your background layer, make a new layer so you do have something to actually draw on. And here you can start right at the center dot. Hold down shift and pull to maybe four or five lines over. That's awesome. And then start right in the middle and pull again, maybe 10 or 12 lines down. And that's good. So now we've got kind of a horizon line that's been painted here. Go ahead and hold down Option and sample some of the black. And now what we're going to do, or you can even take an eraser, instead of either of those, I'm going to make a mask on layer one. Sorry, I know I kind of misled you there. Uh, and crank down, select your paintbrush and crank that flow down to say, I'm even going to go 5%. Hit Enter. And then I'm going to choose black to paint, which means I'm going to be erasing this uh, look. And I want the beam to kind of become like a, a star. Down, but it almost like it hits the sides. So I'm kind of leaving some on the edge, as if to say the edge is like receiving the color and reflecting on. The bottom is going to get really tapered. 
You want it to look about even. That was a little chunkier on that side. I want to pull this down. Just really darken some of that up. Go. Yeah, and you overall want the look of sort of this center flare type of thing. That looks really good, and I like where it's headed. So I'm going to do two things to it now. I'm going to give it an inner glow, and I'm going to change it to be from the center. You can see that's yellow. I'm going to go for more of a orangey red and this shows us maybe some lack of balance here that's kind of cool and then we're just going to take the opacity down a little bit on that. I like that I'm just going to bring the opacity the inner glow down a little bit Think about bringing up the noise to maybe 8. You can see what the noise does. It makes this, if I can hide the pixel grid, you can see it's multiple colors it creates in here, kind of giving it a nice textured effect. You do want the grid to still seem like it's sitting on top of it. So next above that, we're going to take a rectangle tool solid black and we're literally going to make a box where our grid sits so it's under the grid and over the red glow and i'm just going to tap it down to align it with the grid and when i do i'm going to bring its fill color down to say 60 how about 40 percent now we have a real clear digital floor and this beam of light happening. And I'm kind of digging where all this is going. So let's keep on pushing this forward. The next thing we're going to do is set this thing in outer space. Of course, it's sci-fi. So how are we going to do that? Let's make a new layer on top of everything and fill it with black. Now, in case you're wondering how I do that, you can hit D on your keyboard and it resets your swatches. And if you hit Command Delete, it fills it with whatever background color you have, so I just hit X to swap the swatches, and then Command Delete to fill with black. Next, I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make sure Monochromatic is checked, and for Amount, well, let's crank it up to say 20. And instead of Uniform, let's go for Gaussian. That'll add a little extra randomness to this whole thing. Now you can take that layer and duplicate it. We'll get into why we duplicate it in a second, but hide the underneath layer and leave the copy on. And what you can see is this made a bunch of little white and gray specks. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, except for they're way too small, so they just look like a texture. So zoom out, hit Command T, and what we're gonna do is hold down Option and Shift, and blow these things way, way up. Okay, now it looks like TV static. So we're gonna go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Now at Levels, I can pull in and brighten the stars and cut off pockets of no stars. See that? So the more I add in, the more depth I allow. And I can even tone down the white. But I won't. Maybe bring the middle up a little bit. That looks like a really nice star field. Now with that star field, go ahead and put it on screen mode. And you can see we have space stars. Yay! Now why do we keep the other layer? Well, you can turn on the other layer 
and set that to say screen mode and turn its opacity all the way down to say 8 or 9 percent let's go for 10 percent to be even and that just adds a nice texture to the whole thing these stars are really bright so we're going to make a new layer and we're going to go to filter render again with white and black clouds and then we're going to set this layer to multiply and what that's doing is it's knocking out a lot of our stars now since that's knocking out a lot of our stars we're going to move take the stars and we're going to move them behind this glow so now we have all these layers sitting behind our glow our glow on our floor is in the forefront and you can take your stars layer and just go ahead and play with the opacity until it looks natural and I kind of like that that's at 40 percent maybe, maybe I'll hyper real and bring it up to say 60 percent but I'm liking the way that looks and I think everything is looking pretty cool and kosher now let's typeset some stuff I'm using a font called Vitize Sans or Vitesse Sans V-I-T-E-S-S-E -S -S -E. let's play how to pronounce Let's play guess how to pro Let's play guess how to pronounce that font name, right? All right, with Vitesse Sans or Vitize, I'm going to stop guessing. Let's typeset something. Uh in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just use the good old-fashioned all caps Quintel designs. And I'll bring that up to the top layer. Put that down here. Do Quintel designs here. And the second line is going to be 1980s sci fi style. Other Quintel designs, I'm going to go ahead and make this black italic. I'm going to turn my tracking down way low, say negative 10. Blow up the size, may even bring it negative more. I like that, that looks pretty good. And now take your two fonts and just crank them up. Give me some obnoxious size. And centered. Now you don't have to use this typeface. This was just one that kind of made me feel like the classic science fiction look. Now we could be done here, but there's still more that we're going to add to give it that extra retro effect, and you're going to see what I mean really soon. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put a gradient on our text. And not just any gradient. What we're going to do is go ahead and open up the gradient palette and steal the pre-made Photoshop gradient of the chrome where it goes light blue to gold and then down to white and we're gonna take that and do some editing to it so we're gonna start with so first we're gonna reverse it and then let's do some editing to it so starting with this blue let's choose a blue that looks a little bit more like our blue. Maybe it's purpley. Kind of like that. Feeling good about that blue? That's a 4D4999. I guess some would call it purple. I'm going to bring it down. I could pick up some blue. And here, instead of being the gold, let's get down and dirty with a 
color that we know we have in there. That's 4C081D. I don't know why I'm reading this to you. You can really kind of eyeball it. I always do. The point is to just take it and play with it and, you know, make it fun, make it your own. Just find colors that sort of seem neat to you. This it looks like it wants to skew more. <laughs> yep, that's about the look we're going for. I don't want it to go straight to white. I'd like this to be kind of bluish down here. That's looking great. I may go back and end up tweaking this, but we'll play it by ear. Now we're going to go ahead and give this an inner glow. The inner glow is going to be another super light blue. Bring the size up so that it's kind of hugging the letters. Bring the opacity up a little bit so it seems like there's some extra shine. And you can even bring the choke up just to get it away from the edge and make it seem a little bit more solid. As you bring up the choke, you may need to bring down the size. I'm doing that here. And that gives it a little extra cheesy metal look. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put on a stroke. And instead of color for the stroke, let's do a gradient stroke. And that gradient, we're going to make it angle 90 degrees. So that's dark on top, light on bottom. Let's remember that. Because we're going to change it. We're going to go light on top. Let's do this kind of reddish pink that we had for our glow in the background. And on the bottom, we're going to go for super dark pink. Crank up the size on that. You can see what it looks like outside and inside. They're centered. I appreciate the outside. It shows the outer glow the most. Play with the size till it feels natural. Six looks good for me. I'm going to hit OK here. And these letters are a little far apart. So I'm going to go ahead and take them and bring down the kerning just a little bit more so they're all kind of touching. Move this text in. White seems a little plain. They would rarely probably do white. Rarely probably, if that's a term. Let's give that at least some sort of light purple. And then let's right click and go into blending off to the second layer. And give that an outer glow. Let's crank up the size. And uh, simple anyway color brighter opacity down just to give it a touch of color the last thing I'm going to do on the top layer too is give it a drop shadow increase the size go up in the distance keep beefing up that size the opacity can come up too so we got 100 on the opacity 27 on the distance 73 on the sides Make sure that bottom layer sits on top of it so it's not eaten by the shadow. And there we go. I may tuck that into here or over here depending on where I want everything to sit. But now I've got this Quintel Designs and what I'm seeing here is that inner glow far away is a little bright. I tone it down and that's awesome. So the final thing uh, we can do here is add a little extra touches on the letters. And we're going to do that like this. We're going to create a new layer on top of everything. Go ahead and select your gradient and leave it on the same mode it is. Let's just change it to the diamond gradient. That's the last one. And on the corner of these letters, go ahead and make some flashy shines just by pulling out these little flares here and then once you've got a bunch of super shiny flares on your text we're going to change the blending mode to overlay 
and that's going to give an extra sense of sort of metallic randomness to the letters. If you want to, sometimes I'll make another layer and put it on screen mode and then go into filter, sharpen, and say sharpen more and do that a few times until you get these kind of crazy looking things. And you can turn their opacity way, 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 way down. Looks like I'm doing 16%. And you can see, kind of get these digital shines on everything. And they're kind of spiking out into space. But as you can see, without them, I still think it's pretty tasteful in it, and it works. Now that you have this all set and kind of ready to go, or looking good, I'm going to delete the layer, I don't even really like it anymore, <laughs> see, I get sick of it myself, uh, the last thing you can do is on top of everything in your adjustments palette, go ahead and create a hue and saturation layer. Now you can use this hue slider up here to drag around and play with different colors and different looks to your crazy retro uh, video game style. And if I find one that I think is a little bit nicer, maybe I like this purple and the green. I'll pull the opacity down a little bit to say 28%. You can see you can get a nice blend between what you did and what the new result was. And that's cool. So pull it down over here. I love that color, a nice red and blue look. And that's basically it. That's how we create this thing. So Illustrator's used to generate a nice solid grid as a smart object. Photoshop is used for doing basically the rest. Guys, I'm trying something new this time. If you want to buy the file that you see for only $2, that's $1.99, you can do so over in the shop at Quintel Designs. So hey, if you like it or you don't want to bother to make it yourself or you just want to get up and go, <laughs> you already have this font. Uh, then you can go ahead and grab this file and uh, you know exactly how it was made so I mean you could just make it yourself but hey if you just want to go for what I gave you then you're free to do that two bucks super cheap uh, get it if you want this get it if you just like the tutorial and uh, I appreciate it I'll see you next time and have a good one I'll see you next time guys keep designing